In this video, we will graph two absolute value functions when the equations are in the form of y or f of x equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus h plus k, where the value of h will shift the graph left or right, and the value of k will shift the graph up or down. When h is positive or greater than zero, inside the absolute value we have the quantity x minus h, so when we have subtraction h is positive, and the graph is shifted right h units, and when h is less than zero or negative, inside the absolute value we would have x minus negative h, which simplifies to x plus h. So when we have addition inside the absolute value, h is negative, and the graph is shifted left the absolute value of h units. And then for k, if k is positive, the graph is shifted up k units. Notice how k is outside the absolute value. And when k is negative or less than zero, the graph is shifted down the absolute value of k units. So looking at our first equation, we have y or g of x equals the absolute value of the quantity x plus two minus three. So because we have this plus two inside the absolute value, and in standard form it has to be subtraction, we need to think of this as x minus negative two, which means h is negative two, and therefore the graph is going to be shifted left the absolute value of negative two units, or left two units. And then because we have a minus three outside the absolute value, k is negative three, which means the graph is going to be shifted down the absolute value of negative three units, or down three units. And because the vertex is h comma k, we also know the vertex is the ordered pair negative two comma negative three. Before we graph this by hand, let's verify this transformation using an animation. Again, based upon our equation, we now know h is negative two and k is negative three. So notice when h is negative two, the graph is shifted left two units, and when k is negative three, the graph is shifted down three units. Which means to graph the given function, we need to take the points on the parent or basic absolute value function and shift them left two and down three. So going back to our graph, let's start by translating the vertex of the basic absolute value function. So we'll take this point here, and then we will shift it left two units and down three units, and therefore the vertex for the given absolute value function is this point here. We'll now let's do that for two more points on the parent absolute value function. Let's use this point here to the right of the vertex. And again, we will now shift it left two and down three, which gives us this point here. And let's do one more point, let's say this point here to the left of the vertex. Again, left two, down three, and we now have a point on the given absolute value function. Notice how we have enough points to make a nice V-shape using these three points. So the graph of the given absolute value function is this graph here. This is the right side, and this is the left side. Let's look at another example. Here we have y or g of x equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus three plus two. Because we have a minus three inside the absolute value, we know h is going to be positive h is positive three, which means the shift is going to be right three units. And because we have a plus two outside the absolute value, k is positive two, and therefore the shift is also up two units. And because h is three and k is two, we know the vertex is three comma two. And again, let's verify this by going back to the animation. Based upon our equation, we know h is three. Notice when h is three, the graph is shifted right three units. And when k is two, the graph is also shifted up two units. This is the graph of the given absolute value function. So now we will take points on the basic or parent absolute value function and shift them right three and up two units. So again, let's start with the vertex. And we will shift the vertex right three and up two, which gives us the vertex 
of the given absolute value function, which notice how it does have the ordered pair three comma two. And now we'll pick two more points, one on the left and one on the right of the vertex of the parent function. Starting with this point here, we shift the point right three and up two to find a point on the given absolute value function. And let's also pick a point to the left of the vertex on the parent function, let's say this point here. Right three, up two, and by using these three points, we can make a nice graph of the given absolute value function. We know the graph is going to be a V-shape passing through these three points, which means to the right of the vertex, this would be the graph, and to the left of the vertex, this is the graph. I hope you found this helpful.